Hello and welcome back! And if you're new to my channel, then welcome! And my name is Jennifer and I make stuff. So before we get any further, it would be so great if you could like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you get notified when I upload more stuff because I have so many more projects planned in the future so it would be nice if you get notified every time that I'm uploading stuff. So this is a continuation of the balcony makeover that I have been working on now this summer and this is step three or part three of this project which is hopefully going to be a much quicker process because finally we can move on from all of the sanding. All the groundwork is done on this balcony and now we can finally focus on all the decorative parts. In this part I'm going to give my outdoor furniture a complete makeover, give them a new paint finish and I'm also going to show you how to use shock paint to paint fabric. I actually tried this one out on one of the cushions on one of the furnitures that I have and it worked to brighten up the fabric. I got a result that I was happy with and that's all that matters. I'm now going to show you how to paint fabric with shark paint and also going to show you the new painted finish that I'm going to add to the actual furniture. The whole process of giving the cushions here a completely different finish. It's a very layered process but I have to work in steps. But I wanted to show you three different finishes during the process until I get to the finished result because the reference that I have is a guide so I know which kind of shade I'm going for. I actually found some pillows for this furniture and the pillows that I had before were too small. So I found these. They have a different variations of shades and tones and have a little bit of a shine to them. So the process is going from this. This is from a few layers using cocoa and I think I have a little bit of an antique white here too because there are some brighter spots. I don't know how many times but I have gone over with a spray bottle, sprayed it everywhere and you can see that it has a very textured finish. If you think about the surface of granite stone or marble stone. That was the kind of look that I was going for because I knew that it was going to be a little bit difficult for me to get an even finish. I had to make sure that they were thinned down with water. And this is the finished result. This is after many rounds of going back and forth between cocoa, antique white. And then you can see that those warmer tones in this in the fabric is from the gold and acrylic paint because that's going to be the last final step so I know that I have the brightness that I need and now I just want it to be more warm tone. I'm gonna show you the process now of how I did this. So before I even start applying any kind of shock paint over the surface of the fabric I want to make sure that the cushion and the fabric is more wet than damp but not soaking wet. And this is going to help me when I'm applying the shock paint with the spray bottles to make sure that the paint is more evenly applied. So once the cushion got to the wet finish that I was looking for I started with cocoa mixed in with some water and started spraying it all over the surface and as you can see since the nozzle of the spray bottle that I'm using is it's pretty damaged it's not perfect anymore it actually gives me these cool effects these cool textures that looks like spots in variations of sizes and shapes that reminded me a little bit of the surface of a granite stone or marble stone and this is a technique that I'm going to use over and over again going back and forth between cocoa and then I'm going to go over with some antique white to brighten up some spots until I get to the brightness that I'm looking for. Another thing that I noticed when I was working on this cushion is the fact that I felt like I had more of a struggle to even see some kind of change happening or it was slowly starting to brighten up and on this cushion I didn't get the kind of textured effect that I was 
getting on the first cushions that I was working on. And it turns out that I was actually using too much water with this shock paint during this process that I'm recording. And instead of giving me a textured finish, it actually gave me an even brightened finish, meaning I didn't see any kind of color variations. It only brightened up the fabric slowly and slowly, layer by layer. So that's an alternative. If you're only looking for a painted surface that is going to be an even finish, not a textured finish, then I would recommend using more water than paint and then slowly build up to a brighter finish. But I was looking for a textured finish because I wanted it to match the pillows that I was going to use for the outdoor furniture. And they had more of a textured variations of colors and more of a golden tint to them. And you may be wondering why am I using gold acrylic paint on the surface of these cushions? And the reason for that is the fact that I don't have any chalk paint that is in a warm tone, sand beige tone that goes with the same color scheme as the pillows. So the only option that I could find with the materials and tools I had at home was some golden acrylic paint diluted a lot with water. And then as a final step I'm going to spray it on top of the fabric to give it more of a warm golden tint to them. But that's going to be the final step once I am happy with the brightness that I'm achieving layer after layer of spraying this shop paint. And I'm also doing the same technique on the pillows that I had at first, which was the smaller pillows that I was actually going to replace these newer pillows with. But I'm going to use them as the actual side pillows of the furniture. And since they weren't as dark as the cushions that I had, they won't need as many layers as the cushions that get to the brightness that I'm looking for. But they are definitely going to get the same kind of finish to match the whole set of the cushions and the pillows. going to add graphite chalk paint, exact, exact same one that I used for my kitchen table. First I'm going to paint like two or three layers, thin layers of the chalk paint that is actually going to be mixing with some water to make it easier for me to distribute it much easier and feel like I get more of an even finish and then it dries much faster also and when it has dried I can go over with another layer until I feel like the coverage is good. And and then I'm going to let it dry for approximately an, an hour um, because I'm not looking for it to set completely yet because I'm looking for the effect of the paint is slowly chipping off or something or has faded over the years so I'm looking for that kind of vintage retro old style with a modern twist sort of. I was planning first to do this using a brighter shock paint but then I figure out that I can actually just use because I'm out of finishing wax to deepen the tone of the graphite to give it that darker almost close to matte black so I thought that maybe I can use oil to give that deeper tone since it worked with deepening the wood on the tiles and all that. By a happy accident, I would say, the oil actually rubbed off some of the shock paint. If I try to be a bit careful, it's going to be less shock paint that is getting rubbed off, but just using the oil gave me the kind of look that I was going for, that I was first planning to do with shock paint. It turns out I can do this much quicker with an easier method than just wasting paint by just using oil and then just carefully sort of in a combination of rubbing and dabbing motion but not 
too harsh. I'm going to show you how I do that. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, it's all about the layering technique and then wait until the paint is dried enough and then go over with the oil finish. So to apply the shock paint to the furniture, I'm going to use a sponge and the mixture that I have is like 50-50. It's a lot of water, so you can see when I'm applying the paint, it's very runny. But the reason why I want it to be very runny is because I want it to be able to get into all those nooks and crannies and all the difficult tiny areas because I want to minimize the visibility of the base color of the furniture and get that sort of matte finish. And also the reason why I have it mixed in with so much water is because that's going to help the paint dry much quicker for me to apply a second coat which is going to deepen and add more opacity to the color. For the second layer of the shock paint, I am not adding the paint in a stroke motion. Here I'm actually applying it more of a dabbing motion and I have actually mixed in a lot more shock paint into the water mix. So it would be a little bit more opaque and thicker. And you can see that with this dabbing motion it actually covers up much better. I believe that if I would have gone over with a stroke motion it could increase the risk that I'm starting to remove paint instead of applying paint to the surface. So that's why I'm going over just dabbing the paint on. So today is the next day and that means that the shock paint has actually dried overnight but I think that's not going to be that much of an issue because the surface that is underneath the shock paint it's so slippery so even though it has the paint has dried for over 12 hours. Once I go over it with oil, I think it's going to be rubbed off with no problem at all. I'm gonna try and see if I can use a sponge. You can use just a lint-free cloth also, but I was going to try and see if I can use a sponge because it can actually absorb some of the oil, so it might be a little bit easier to apply it. So I'm going to try and see if I can do this with as thin layer as possible. So I know that every part that I've painted with shark paint actually gets a deeper tone. And then when I, that's done, then I'm going to use a lint-free cloth that has no oil in it and just carefully just remove any excess oil that might be left on the surface. Give a deeper tone to the shark paint but also give it sort of a vintage effect that looks like the paint has faded over the years or chipped off, that kind of look. Obviously if you just want to paint with an even surface and then just add a finishing wax to protect it then you don't have to think about these steps at all. This is just how I'm giving these furniture a little bit more of a vintage look with a modern twist to them. So I'm just going to pour some of the oil into a plastic container and it's the same container that I used for the graphite shock paint that I used yesterday but it's not going to be that much of an issue because it's the same paint that I use for the furniture and I felt like it's still going to give the effect that I'm going for. So I'm applying the oil in more of a dabbing motion just like I did with the second layer of the shock paint and this is just to make sure that I'm not rubbing off too much paint. Hopefully you can see that the shock paint is starting to look a lot deeper in tone but obviously it might look also like it's still a bit bright because the oil makes the surface look very glossy. But once the oil has actually sunk into the shock paint it's going to leave a deeper matte finish once it's dry. that's the finished result of this project or this part in the balcony makeover journey. I am so happy with the finished result. Yes, the finish could have been much better, much more even or something, but I went for that kind of uneven vintage look with all these different variations in tones and 
I actually went for a textured look on the fabric of the cushion so they would match the throw pillows that I have for the outdoor furniture and the actual furniture. I wanted them to have this kind of worn vintage look so it looks like the paint has over time faded. That's the effect I was going for. If you wanted to do a effect that was more even application. When it comes to painting the furniture, just add a thicker layer, less water, more shock paint. But as a tip is just to add a little bit of water so it's easier to actually distribute it over the surface and you realize that shock paint is actually more opaque than you actually know. <laughs> so you can use a little bit of water just to make sure that you can easily just with your brush just paint over the surface. For the actual painting the surface of the fabric and all of that, I just recommend using more water than paint but maybe like 50 50 ratio would be good enough if you're going for a more even application or even result instead of having this textured effect with all these color variations that's totally up to you this is the effect that i was going for and i'm super happy and the colors match each other perfectly and they seem to match the set that i have for all the other decor part that i'm going to have on this balcony and like i said don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you'll get notified when i'm uploading stuff part three is now done and we only have the fun parts left now. I'll see you in part four. Or whatever project I have planned.